So far in our energy unit, we've learned that the starch in potato chips can be broken down by the digestive system into its monomers, glucose. And the reason that happens is because glucose contains energy that cells need. However, the energy in glucose is useless unless cells turn it into a more usable form. So in this video, we're going to explore the process of cellular respiration because this enables cells to harvest the energy in food. Let's start with an overview. In a nutshell, cellular respiration is basically converting the chemical energy in glucose into the chemical energy of ATP, which is much more usable. Now, there are a few different types of cellular respiration, but the two main ones that we're gonna discuss in this video are aerobic respiration and fermentation. An important note, usually when people mention cellular respiration, they're referring to aerobic respiration. So that will be our focus. Let's take a look. First of all, when does aerobic respiration happen? Well, it happens when oxygen is present in the environment. In other words, the environment is aerobic. Where does it happen? Well, it happens in all eukaryotic cells, such as animal cells and plant cells. And it happens specifically within the organelle mitochondria which you'll find in any eukaryotic cell. Let's take a look at the reaction itself. In the reaction of cellular respiration, there are two reactants, glucose and oxygen. The products include carbon dioxide and water, which are really just waste products, and then the target product, ATP, usable energy. Now you can see that this reaction produces lots and lots of ATP. Keep in mind that there are a lot of enzymes involved catalyzing this reaction, but we're not going to explore them right now. Another important thing to note is that in this reaction, if we're going to keep it balanced and conserve matter, you should note that there's one glucose molecule, six oxygen molecules, six carbon dioxide molecules, and six water molecules. So make sure that you've written the balanced reaction in your notes. How efficient is this process? Well, let's compare it to a car burning gasoline. Gasoline is a fuel, kind of like sugar, and gasoline is burned in the presence of oxygen. And some of the energy that's given off is used to move the car. But a lot of the energy is wasted as heat. In fact, 75% is wasted. Only 25% of the energy is actually harnessed by the car. In contrast, in cellular respiration, when glucose is burned in the presence of oxygen, 40% of that energy becomes ATP, which the cells can use for work. The other 60% is lost to the environment as heat. But still, it's a pretty efficient process. And it's because, unlike burning gasoline, cellular respiration is a slow burn. There's lots and lots of steps that allow a lot of ATP to be released. Let's compare that to fermentation. When does fermentation happen? Well, it usually happens when oxygen is not present, when the environment is anaerobic. Where does it happen? Well, this happens in almost all types of cells, both prokaryotic cells, like this bacterial cell, or a eukaryotic cell, such as our cells. And it happens specifically in the cytoplasm. This makes sense if you consider that prokaryotic cells like bacteria don't have fancy organelles, so it wouldn't make sense for fermentation to occur there. Now there's two types of fermentation. The first one is called lactic acid fermentation, and it's pretty simple. There's one reactant, glucose, and there are two products, lactic acid, a waste, and ATP. Note that only two ATP molecules are produced by this process, so it's not nearly as efficient. And this process is pretty important in your lives because it happens not only in your muscle cells, but also in the bacterial cells that produce cheese and yogurt through lactic acid fermentation. The other type of fermentation is alcohol fermentation. It's pretty similar. The starting material is glucose. One of the products is two ATP molecules. And then the two waste products are carbon dioxide and alcohol. And again, this reaction is not nearly as efficient as aerobic respiration. 
This reaction is important though because it's this reaction that causes bread to rise or is involved in the production of beer and wine and other alcohol. And so we will see this happening in yeast cells along with some bacterial cells. And that concludes our exploration of the main types of cellular respiration.